Today I'm joined by Rich Cartwright from Heat Engineer. Heat Engineer is a simple to use software which allows heating engineers, unsurprisingly, and homeowners to do a detailed heat loss calculation on a home. I've known the guys at Heat Engineer for a couple of years, so I've invited them on basically to explain how to put a heat loss calculation together, to look at a real life homeowner example of a thermoskirt project, and discuss how you can optimally design your system with Thermoskirt to ensure that you don't go massively over or massively under on your heat outputs. So in the interest of not wasting any time, because it is a long video, I've got Rick ready for me on the call now. Hello, mate. Hi, how, how are you? Doing, Ethan? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for yeah. inviting me on, on, this, on this podcast. Appreciate it. No problem, no problem. Um, so... You know, I have, I have already done the formal introduction, and in in terms of get for people to get to to know heat heat engineer, maybe you could just tell me why somebody would should use heat engineer over one of those uh, free online radiator calculators that you, you get on manufacturers' websites. Oh uh, yeah, no, no, of course, yeah, they've been around a year, quite a few years, they haven't they? Um, so um, <laughs> the thing is, one of those free calculators online is that it makes lots of assumptions, and you'll find that also you're limited on choice. So you select you want to have a radiator for a bedroom or a living room. Um, you type in the uh, uh, the uh, the length uh, and the width of the room. And it and again it won't even ask you what length is it external or internal walls. I just make an assumption, um, and then you've only got like a selection of like three or four um, building materials to select. So really super limited on choice um, and not very accurate at all um, for typing in the dimension of your of the room either. So you know again things like what's below the room, what's above the room, and and the problem with making those assumptions are uh, is that you're clearly just going to get a rough estimate if that, you know, um, if you want to ensure your emitter is sized accurately, you need to have the flexibility and the freedom to enter in exactly what is uh, within your property, building materials wise and on also dimensions as well. So not to forgetting, like even if the room is vaulted, you know, that's even more challenging, which thankfully heat engineer can address. So yeah, it's, it's all about kind of um, really, uh, the reason why these websites ha have them is because it gives you an idea, a very, very rough idea, but you should never, ever rely on them for accurately sizing uh, any form of emitter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we get it a lot. So we'll, for example, we'll get um, floor plans from a homeowner, say, who's, who's considering installing Thermoskirt, and they'll look at their existing radiators and say, for example, I've looked online, I've got a two kilowatt radiator in this bedroom. Um, how much thermoskirt do I need to put two kilowatts in? And you look at the actual size of the room and think, there's absolutely no way in a million years that you need two kilowatts to to heat that room. But you know whether whether the radiator was yeah. on a special offer at the merchant when it was installed, or whether the radiator, for example, my house when we moved in, there was um, eighteen kilowatts worth of radiators in the house, and now there's about <laughs> seven kilowatts worth of thermoskirt. Um, because yeah. the, the radiators have been in since the 70s. And since then it had, had loft yeah. insulation, cavity oil insulation, double glazing. So the actual heat loss of the property is much lower today than it was when it was built. Um, there's no legislation in the UK, is there, to to do a heat loss calculation when you're replacing a boiler or you're replacing a radiator. You know, you, if your house exists, if it's an existing house, really, you can just put whatever you want in. But that, that's not to say that there, yeah. that there shouldn't be a law to do that. No, quite right. I mean, there is. I mean, so there's there's the Part L regulations where states certainly for a new build heat loss needs to be done, and and if there's any 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 if there's any elements of servicing that needs to be done, such as like replacing a boiler or or and the wet system needs changing, then yes, you do need to do a heat loss calculation. Um, so the the regulations are there, but you know, people policing it. It's very limited, you know. Hopefully, the building inspector might sort of like say something um, if they're even if they're aware of the, you know, the heating system needs to be accurately designed. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, regardless of re uh, regulations or standards, if you own a property and it, or if you are a heating engineer or a plumber, surely you want to walk away from a job or you want to live in a house which is being designed efficiently and is certainly reducing waste you know and, and and you know reducing your running costs and the only way you can do that 
is by accurately sizing a system doing a room by room heat loss calculation so you know the system size are accurately with the pipes whether it's a heat pump or a boiler and also the emitters as well so there's I, I don't think there's ever a kind of an argument saying i don't need to do one you know it's like why yeah. wouldn't you do one you know so it's so it's easy to say well i don't need to do one you know it's no regulations on it like yeah but surely you want to save some money right and and reduce your running costs and uh improve efficiency etc you know so it's 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 a no-brainer as they say <laughs> correct and and obviously with um to, to bring it on to the software with software like like heat heat engineer there's no excuse to not not do one now so i guess the the, the purpose of this um conversation really is to kind of either a introduce to our installer network um the software itself and how it can benefit them as a business but also uh, open up the conversation to homeowners as well because there's a, there's a huge number of homeowners that that we work with who are you know looking to improve the heating system they're interested and they're doing their own research you know that they're educating themselves on how it works and is a heat pump going to be mm -hmm. right for them and is it even possible to install in their home before they engage with an installer um, and i think that in our sector so much of this this smart tech that's out there obviously for commercial reasons just gets directed straight at the trade um but ultimately yeah. there's, a, there's a bit of a trick being missed there with the homeowners that if, if a homeowner understands more about what they need then they can make make better decisions yeah. um so so for us we'd obviously like to host host this video um, as a resource for homeowners to use and say, look, if you guys are really interested in improving the efficiency and the performance of your heating system, mm. run this exercise first. So yeah. in, in order for no, us to do course. that, I've, yeah, yeah. I have sent you, sorry, Rich, in, in order for us to do that, I've yeah, sent you a floor point. plan yeah. of, a pro, of a project that we've already done. Um, yeah. A, a, a great customer of ours called Jason Scotter. He's a, he's a prime example of a, of a, dedicated self-builder i think he's done about three or four of his own self-build projects most of them are renovations right. but they're renovation to the point of practically being new he's had thermoscut in for a, a couple of years so it's gone through a few winters so we know that it works but i sent his information over to you so that you could run some exercises on it and, and maybe use that as a test case as a demo and um, so yeah I'll, I'll hand over to you now to kind of run us through the software and and how it works and how you would you would run a heat loss and um yeah yeah no, of course, you're the expert definitely. yeah all right brilliant okay um go, go, going back on to the kind of uh availability for homeowners as well as so, though so yeah if any if any because you you do we do get a lot of home well a handful of homeowners in comparison to the amount of users we have for for plumbers and heating engineers so yes pr predominantly we designed this software for plumbers and heating engineers to do room by room heat loss calculations and further system design as well like pipe sizing in it it's kind of mm -hmm. a table sort of format um it's if i click on pricing quickly you'll notice that it is highly uh there's quite a few um cards you can choose as subscriptions for if you're a professional heating engineer and yes if you are a home no, homeowner then you can have the kind of the diy uh, one-off like package or you can actually buy three if you like as well so there is that available um because we have always designed it in the minds for heating engineers that are, have certainly sort of trained up to understand this process more certainly more than your average homeowner that's why there's end mm -hmm. up, you'll end up paying a bit more of a premium as a homeowner homeowner because we can they provide the extra support um and but of course uh so a, a heating engine will always get more of a premium like price uh in comparison so just in case any homeowners sort of might might kick up a fuss it you know we are we've got the price there to reflect um who if you are a professional heating engineer or not so hopefully that kind of justifies that <laughs> um yeah, the, the trade the trades pay monthly presumably yeah they do yes yes quite right yes, yeah they do yeah there's different like they can even pay monthly or annually yeah um and it and cool. it's it's it, heat engineer essentially is, is scalable as a business so you can be a sole trader um and so you are effectively the surveyor on site or you're the, or you're the, and you're also the designer or you can have working in a team where it's just you and one other person um or you can have an enterprise subscription where essentially you can have a lots of subcontractors or employees out on site doing surveys using their laser tool using the heat engineer app measuring the property whilst they're on site and then sending 
those surveys to your dashboard. So there are four, essentially there are four ways to use Heat Engineer um, in order to get these sort of surveys done. And I keep, keep saying surveys because that's where it all kind of starts. So nine years ago, Heat Engineer was created to, you know, to, to alleviate this, fuck, this, this kind of frustration of, um, of, of measuring a property and using like a, you know, the idea is to how to use your laser tool more effectively. So the app, so we have a heat engineer app on the Android devices and also the um, uh, Apple devices. Um, and they, once you've downloaded, you can start populating the dimensions when you're on site using your laser tool. Using the laser tool is absolutely critical because it, you can use it as a calculator. Make sure you've got an area and a linear feature on there as well, and plus feature, so you can measure linear lengths, areas, and, and add them together as well. So that's that's always like pretty kind of like critical that. So you're on site, you use the app tool. In fact, I'm going to click on our about page because there's a little kind of like um, a pit image here, look, down here. So as a surveyor, you're using the apps um, to gather the dimensions and the building materials, even for vaulted ceilings as well. Once you've collected that information, then you can send it to yourself if you have an account already or one of your colleagues who might have an account or to another company. So you, it's it's very flexible, certainly as an engineer surveyor um, who you want to send the survey to. The real magic starts to happen um, when you start to access a submitted survey here. So in the comfort of your own office or again, if it's one of your colleagues, they can click on submitted surveys and they can see who the surveyor was, what device they used. Not particularly exciting this bit here because it's just been me, but I can see that I use an Android device here. Um, and then they, they go, they click on open and then they go through those steps and I'll show you those steps in a second. So that's the first way, using a mobile app on site. The second method is creating a survey by clicking on the dashboard. So we click here, we put in the name, address, uh, the postcode, um, so I'll just quickly just do this now, just to get just to get sort of started. I'll type in our office address. Um, uh, there it is. There. Um, the, apologies on you, you on this uh, screen sharing at the moment. You can't see my drop down list. So there's a drop down list of addresses, and I just selected that address there. The importance about the address is because it it, it works out the altitude within a radius of three meters. And then we can fine tune the external design temperature. So we've around this area for this particular property, we've got a design external temperature now of minus 2.92. So that's important. The next step is to start adding rooms. So I can go to add a room. So this is this is the kind of the desktop approach of, of, of doing a room by room heat loss calculation. So dining room there. And you can see how easy it is to add rooms. And it's so easy to, to edit as well. So naturally for living room, actually is a bedroom above the, there. So I can go to above there. I can uh, type in BED. So search in that and then I can click that, go there. So it's, it's quick and easy to start to add rooms there. And then next step on the desktop is to start adding dimensions as well. So I would say, although this kind of hopefully looks quite impressive for you, I would say this is the slowest way of doing the heat loss. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's important. This is the careful way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, the, the thing is, some people, uh, what we're trying to do here, Ethan, is we're trying to accommodate for everyone's needs. And it's it's so, it's really surprising how many people have, want to stick in their own comfort zone. Um, we even have mm. users that still don't want to use a laser tool. They would prefer to use a tape measure. So in our, in our app, we have the feature where you can add areas up within there so we've made a little calculator in the app just to accommodate for people who still want to use a tape measure so that's fair enough and and we do get users who want to use the desktop we've just got a bunch of numbers on a bit of paper in front of them they just want to type it in there so it's like okay we can we right. can do that we can accommodate so that's that's where you start entering the dimensions then and then we move on to the building materials here as well which we're kind of doing in a, in, a, in a bit so that's that's the kind of that's the second approach so we talked about the app app approach on site and then we've talked about the desktop one. The second process, sorry, the third process is another desktop. I should probably go back to it again. I'll go back to this one. The, it's another, a third, uh, it's a third approach for desktop. So a minute ago, you saw me add rooms on here. The next approach mm -hmm. is actually using, uh, using rooms measuring, measuring using the CAD feature. So this allows me now to say, 
um, if I want to start adding another room but using CAD, so if I go to say a sitting room, add that there. So I can start. I'm going to open up. I can open up an engineering drawing. In fact, it might end up opening up the engineering drawing we were looking at a minute ago, um, Ethan. Yeah. So I hope that's okay. <clears throat> I'm not going to go yeah, through the, the processes in detail here, but essentially once you've added a scale, so we can, it's really important to add a scale and you can always watch a video. We have a, we have this kind of YouTube video here. You can watch the, how to, how to use this system. But what you're doing essentially is clicking on this ruler here, zooming in and start measuring. So, um, yeah, I might have a scale there. So if I just click on that and then, we probably might not do that because I haven't scaled it correctly here, but you kind of you might get the idea anyway. So snap to a feature there. Yeah, it's, I haven't scaled it correctly here, but you can, it's not it's not going to be that big. Um, I haven't scaled it. The <laughs> yeah. idea if it is, is it's a big house. Stop house that room. room. Yeah, I know. I know it's huge. It, it, it people watching this, hopefully that's it, it. It it reinforces the fact that please add a scale before you start doing this. Um, so. The beauty about this, you start measuring, it populates the value in there um, and you you don't need another CAD application. So you can open up, you can open up an image, you can open up a PDF, a CAD file, so it's DXF or DWG. It's totally up to you. Um, and yeah, so start measuring that process, um, clicking on the rulers after, scale, after obviously scaling it. Um, then uh, you can just finish it um, and you'll see all the dimensions populated on, on, on here. So it's a really nice way to quickly get the dimensions into, into here. Once you start, once you've used that, that CAD measuring tool. So this is apologies this is a very, very quick introduction. So hence I haven't gone through the steps in detail, but like I said, um, there is a YouTube video you can access to, and it's about 60 minutes long. So it gives you more information about how to use that. So that's the third process. The fourth process, which is fairly new, which we kind of released just at the end of um, September, is using this fancy magic plan. Now, if I click on this magic plan, magic plan have a, a very magic plan have really specialized in in how to do in, in sorry, not how to do in, in creating surveys um, when you're on site. You can manually draw rooms. You can use the LiDAR feature. Those of you not aware of LiDAR, LiDAR is a, a special, it like, uses a, a LiDAR lens in the back of I, um, um, iOS devices. So pro models, pro, pro, pho, pro iPhones and pro iPads. And within, within typically, if I could click on this project here, in under, say, I would say, this that's the living room there. That living room was scanned in certainly under one minute. So each each room takes less than one minute to scan. You get a 3D image and the accuracy, certainly if you've got nice straight lines and stuff like that and, and straight windows, and you've got no kind of recesses in the windows. So it's not like a cottage. The accuracy is brilliant. It's very, very close to a laser tool. When I mean late, very, very close, we're talking about like 10 millimeters, might be 10 millimeters out. But again, you need to do your due diligence when you're doing this because you, you need to ensure that you're happy with the line. So there, there is a there's a quite a few kind of like YouTube videos about how the LiDAR works with Magic Plan, as you can imagine. But the moment you've got typically got this plan, um, you can extract the dimensions super quick um, into Heat Engineer. So um, I'll, op I'll open up this one as well. So you can also open up. So yeah, so that living room, using the LiDAR on an iPhone or, or iPad, the Pro models, I, I was able to scan that within under under one minute. It probably took, what, 30 seconds, in fact? So, and it, and it picks up all the objects as well, which is incredible. Um, now, the important bits here is that because of that, um, and it's, in, it's relatively kind of new build, everything is kind of square edged and everything. It's not like a, 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 a like a cottage with unusual shapes in. So the LiDAR isn't particularly great with unusual shapes. Um, but if you've got kind of a, a typical kind of uh, square, um, traditional kind of new build in the sense of the, certainly the last sort of like 20, 30 or even 40 years, then it, it will scan the room really, really well. Um, so the advantage of using Magic Plan it means that you know you can. I'll, I'll stop sharing that, and I'll show you the other two D one now as well. I'll share this one. Uh, there we go. This is the two D. So you can see that 
having you use LiDAR, it's picked up all the dimensions um, and it's created an engineering drawing essentially. Um, and what we we'll do is within Heat Engineer, after you've linked up your Magic Plan account in the Heat Engineer dashboard, is that we can extract all the dimensions in seconds. So you don't need to populate the window areas, the floor areas, and the window length, uh, the external wall lengths, the internal wall lengths. It's done in seconds. So we're pretty like happy mm. with that kind of process. So, so typically, if I kind of click on this one here, if I go to create serve, I, I need to. I'll, I'll go back to the dashboard again. So bear, bear with me a second. So I go yeah. to um, the dashboard, and just to show you quickly how 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 it works. I'm going to click on create uh, create survey from plan. So I create that. It's going to take about five seven seconds because extracting all those dimensions and what rooms are above and below, et cetera. Um, we've got the address, so I can just sort of like typically can confirm that just to get the, the data there, the weather data. The room features, so it's it's I can see it's used magic plan because I've got this magic plan icon now here. Um, we've got all the rooms listed on there. We've even got rooms which we don't particularly want in the heat loss, but at least our software's said it's, it's excluded them from the report. Um, we know what is above the room, what's below the room. Um, that's all great. And this is the impressive stuff. It's got all the dimensions in there as well. So, you know, you can imagine even if you're using our fancy CAD feature, a measuring feature, it'll still take you a good sort of like, you know, what, half an hour to sort of measure measure the property. Easily, um, yeah. But this Easily. did it um, instantly. Yeah, yeah. So it's, 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 it's awesome. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so yeah, so that's the final and fourth way to you to use our software to do a room by room heat loss calculation and get the and get the report from that as well. Cool. So should we, should we have a look at the one at the design that have? Um, yeah, yeah, no, sure, design. sure. Sorry, yeah. Okay, so let's 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 do that then. Yeah, cool. Um, I should shall I mention the fact there's a course as well? We, we've got like an online course releasing soon as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you want to want to go from there, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, cool. Okay, so just before I open up um, a report that I have in progress or survey I have in progress, um, we can look at some thermoskirt. Um, I thought it's worth mentioning that we are shortly releasing an online training course for our users that you will receive a, a voucher code. Typically, it, the price is there is a price applied, but for you guys that are signed up. Um, to use our system, then you will get a voucher code to get 100% off. So something to look out for there. And it, it typically might take an hour and a half to do the course or two hours, but it will give you an, enough intel and co hopefully confidence for you to sort of like use our system. Anyway, I thought, thought it might be worth mentioning. So let's open up a, a report that's in progress. Um, and it's the Thermoscut demo. And you can see it it's me there. I started it and I used the desktop. So I'm going to go to open. Um, I've got my address in there and I know, I had, yeah, we've got an external design temperature of minus 3.9 as well. Now, just for this exercise only, um, I've added three rooms. So it's naturally in a house, you'd have more than that, but it's just to sort of like for the ease and the speed of this, this kind of session. Um, Ethan, you're okay with that, aren't you? Seven, three rooms. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay with having three rooms. Three bedrooms are the normally the <laughs> ones that count. It, it might be it might be worth us yeah, exactly. um, running an exercise on say the lounge, for example, and um, just so we can kind of go through mm -hmm. one step by step as if you are adding a new a new room. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, okay, cool. So let's go and add a room there then. Yeah, let's do a living room. Oh, lounge. There we go. So lounge. Um, Below the room, there is nothing. Above the room, um, I can say there is, I think there's a lounge. In fact, the bedroom three, I said there's a lounge, wasn't I? I know it's a living room. So, yeah, right, let's change that to, in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm yeah. going to go to Above the lounge, lounge is like a, is a heated that to suite. living room. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to change that to bedroom three above that. So, going to make, so there we go. That makes sense now. So I've got a living room, and above it, I've said there's a bedroom three. Oh, hang on. Yep. <laughs> Making more areas. Bedroom two. So I'm going to change that to bedroom two. Um, I can quickly just do a word search on that. There we go. Bedroom two. Right. 
that's better. Yeah, because bedroom two says the living room's, living room's below that. Okay, that's fine. The I, I also want to change the when the room was built. So um, I'm going to say because this is this is important. So the the age of the rooms will dictate the year changes per hour and also the room temperatures. So the, typically, the older the room, then likely the more drafty it's going to be. So the air change, the air change per hour will automatically increase. This is something that we're looking to really kind of improve in the future. So collecting real life data from properties, um, and then rather than looking uh, from our standards from the, the Chartered Institute Building Service Engineers using their guide, we can actually get closer to the truth on these values because you'll find that this does influence the heat loss quite a lot in fact actually um let's go to dimensions so i don't know what dimensions for you i'm going to add the living room so um if i make up a value here ethan you don't mind do you uh make a so let's put a value i mean there. i can give you the actual room values if, if you want the actual values well um go on what's the external wall length the the external wall length at the front of the property, external the, wall the length lounge. is. is do, 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 four and a half. It is nine meters of external wall. What about for this the lounge though? That is just the lounge, yeah. So I mean, I assume that you, I assume that uh, an unheated garage you'd count as an external wall right no actually a party so it's a party yes yeah, it's the party so we sh should make okay so i can see the guys and look at the plan now so we could say that it's a five at the front and then what for the party wall and do that yeah yeah let's do that let's do four meters of party wall because of the garage parallel to it and then the external wall is there's five and then I think it's about 14. It's about 14 square meters, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. This um whack, whack my area tool around it nice and quick. And times six. Yeah, we are 20. five by four. Yeah, 20 square meters. Just over 20, 20.3 yeah. square meters. Yeah. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so we've got our dimensions in here. Uh, the reason why these are green is that the darker green highlights the larger number in the column and the lighter is the lowest number. So this is helps to reduce any human error because in the past you've had people like saying, oh, was my heat loss so big um, for bedroom, bedroom one? You know, like, OK, well, actually, you just found out that you've actually entered the value of 236.7. So you kind of missed the decimal point. So it's it's it just helps out, you know, highlighting the maximum minimum number. So nice bit of reducing yeah. hum, human error that is. Um, or oh, I should go back to voltage rooms. If you do have any rooms with voltage rooms, there's eight different types of voltage rooms we accommodate for. So this is just type one here. Uh, if I go to one which is kind of half one, so you can get these unusual shapes. So we accommodate for voltage rooms not only on the desktop, which you can see right now but also within the app as well, whilst you're on site. So that's that's a pretty useful feature. But in this case, there is no voltage rooms that we're kind of like playing around with here anyway. So I just kind of leave that. Go to walls. So I, I pre-populated those building materials already for that. Um, I'm going to use the copy all feature just to sort of like get that. In fact, I don't need to copy that. This, this copy all feature is great because it means that I can tick the destination of the copy I want it to go there and I click that to there. It just saves me having to select from the drop down list. Although I will okay. show you the drop down list because, because, because we do have pictures as well. I don't know where this will that show on your screen. Um, so this is for the party wall. So for a party wall, it might not be so. You got actually it's got insulation in there to be fair. Yeah, got some good insulation. So um, I'm going to put in it's got um, that stuff there. There we go. And click. There we go. Got that. Go to next uh, window. Oh, I didn't put a window in, did I, for around the living room? There's definitely a window in there. I think it's the same as the other ones. They're quite um, universal. These it's windows. Two point four um, meters wide. The window. Yes, and the height is about zero point six. So we've got an area of one point four four. Because I did, I did do that on the other ones. <laughs> so. I'll put that in there. So you've got 1.44. Um, hopefully that's correct with, because the height is like 0. 0.6 um, high. Um, it's got that. 
Okay, so go back to, and we are, so if there is a dimension that exists and there's no building material, then we highlight it orange. So that's why, again, it's helping to reduce human error here as well. So go to living room, window area, uh, sorry, window type, and then uh, I can just go to uh, type in here, type in new, there we go. It's for a new dwelling. And then we get to the floors and ceilings. So I can just go to here, the living room, and then for floor, I can type in INT, intermediate tall um, uh, floor with insulation. And then for the roof, I'm going to say it's got 300 mil of insulation as well because it's quite, quite, it's, well, it's essentially it's a, it's a new build. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, that heat loss for the whole. I was going to say for the whole building there, uh, usually would show for the whole building, but we've only done done this particular um, case for three rooms. But you can imagine that as you add more and more rooms, because you would typically add them all in, you know, step step two here, just got adding more rooms here, then on step eight, that total value will, will certainly increase. So just bear that in mind. There's also this quality assurance check. So we, because this is a report I had in process or progress already, you'll find that these won't be pre-ticked beforehand. So you will have an opportunity right. to sort of double check that you're happy with the postcode. Is that room um, correct with a larger surface area? Are the rooms above and below correct? And also, is that the room? Is that the highest U value you have? Because if you've accidentally selected a building material with a high U value, that's going to have a huge effect on the heat loss of the property. And of course, will have a, an effect on, uh, on on the heat source, whether it's a heat pump or boiler. And obviously the, the emitter is likely to be too large as well. So that, that'll help to do some extra due diligence there. So I can just close that window down there. So we've got our watts per meter squared displayed for each room. We've got our total watts as well listed. Um, and then we've got a summary of all of our U values we've used so um, we can quickly have a look at that without the description and then we've got the temperatures above and below um, the, uh, the the rooms as well so we can just sort of like double check that so we're kind of happy to proceed to the next step really so we, what you'd naturally do here is you would then go through the process of selecting the heat source so if I click on the select the heat source Again, because this is the one I had already in process, um, I was able to say, okay, I want to select uh, an air source heat pump, but you can select other other fuel types as well. Um, oil, gas, LPG, you name it, it's all in there. <clears throat> um, I wanted to use a MCS certified heat pump, so I ticked that, and then I get a, a large, a very comprehensive large list of all the manufacturers. You can't see when I click on this drop down, you can't see it, but there, we've got over 1,300, sorry, 3,100 models. We've got, then you can see it on my dashboard. We've got, <laughs> we've got them all in there now. Yeah. It's, but also, Ethan, which really, which is really impressive. You need, can you see the Scott value here for that flow temperature? Mm -hmm. It says 48. Watch this. Like, it's, so any, any, if I change that, that Scott value changes for any heat pump at any temperature, at any flow temperature. So we have every single Scott data for all the heat pumps that are MCS <laughs> registered at, at one degree increments. <laughs> so it's a pretty intensive wow. data set. Yeah, yeah. So we're pretty kind of happy with that. Um yeah, you'll, now, you'll be able to then actually rever reverse engineer what your r running costs will be then, um, can't you? you know, if you've got the SCOP data for whatever the, the Valen um, Aratherm 3 kilowatt unit, if you know, yeah. for example, that you're going to run it at 45 degree max, you know what your SCOP's likely to mm. be. You'll be able to make some estimations on what your overall running costs are going to be as, as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. No, hundred percent. So in fact, actually, if I, if I made the assumption that I'm happy with that manufacturer and the model I've got and the flow temperature of 48, if I go to yeah. my optional pages, I could go to fuel comparison just to skip straight to that. We'll come back to the business in a second, but <clears throat> I could already see, right. Well, actually, if I a better, a better rate, say that on the electricity <clears throat> and add my heat pump in there as well. Increase that there. There we go. So I can see that 
um, my heat pump has got certainly got a, quite an impressive kind of uh, result there. I'll get rid of these other kind of ones that I'm not particularly interested in. So compare against oil, mains, gas, and air source heat pump. So my running cost is is pretty good, and I'm using the exact scop values that are derived from that particular heat pump model as well. So it's it's going back to what you just said, Ethan. You know, you can use that as a as a nice sort of comparison by going in yeah. and changing the uh, the flow temps there. That's really good so for us. Kind of I mean, we, we, get asked, to... we get asked a question. We get asked a question a lot. Sorry, Rich. We get asked a question a lot that um, people say to us, "What do, what does thermoskirt cost to run?" But thermoskirt is ultimately oh, yeah. just a dumb emitter. You know, it comes down to how it's sized, what's yeah. the heat pump, what's your flow temperature, what's the insulation value of the home. I mean, what does thermoskirt cost to run? Is kind of like saying, mm-hmm. "What does a tire cost to run?" It's like, well, it kind of depends what engine the tire is attached to mm. do you know what i mean like it's just the bit on the end that yeah, yeah. has contact with the road where the bit on the end that has contact you know with you yeah and that's a really good analogy i like that um yeah you made a really valid point the, the yeah because this essentially if you want to make any adjustments and really see the difference of running costs it, it all stems really from this flow temperature that you specified because when we start to move over to this emitters and radiator section, we've got a maximum flow temperature specified and also delta T. So really between the maximum flow temperature and the delta T, whether it's a boiler or whether it's a heat pump, that's essentially your deciding factor of what kind of efficiencies you're really looking for. You know, if you're going to have a, a gas boiler running like 75 degrees Celsius, it's not going to condense. So that's why, you know, there's, mm. there's lots of kind of movement around now in the sense of like in the industry like please if you're going to like calibrate recalibrate reservice your your boiler or put a new boiler in set it to 55 flow temp please and then you'll get that boiler condensing equally with a heat pump you know the lower the flow temperature then naturally the higher the scop value the the higher this this the seasonal coefficient of performance you're going to get and that's yeah regardless of any kind of emitter you know um so that's why that that kind of conversation and that information certainly needs to had be had with any homeowner who needs to have a better understanding of their running costs so can, for the purposes of this um, exercise can we um can we set the flow temperature of the heat pump to 45 with a delta t of 5 for example because i think that's the that's what the majority of of our installers will design to yes um, you know, when yeah, it's minus no, four outside, play. for example. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. So let's go to here, 45, and then so Scott values change. So it's improved. And then we'll go to here just to check it. So I've got to change. I'm just changing this. This is for MCS purposes. So it's got to be there to 45. So this is a, this is a guide, really. This is just a guide to um, give you an idea of, of what, if there are any existing, say, emitters, are they undersized or oversized? Um, and also, if there's any underfloor heating, is the underfloor heating adequate? It's not. It, it's, it should only be used as a guide. Um, if you are going to start designing your emitters, it's the other page you need to use, which is over here, which is emitters and radiators. So that's the important bit which we're about to go into now. So I've done it now, Ethan. You can see we've got flow temperature 45. Um, typically for a heat pump, you know, you're ranging the delta T between five and seven. Uh, I can leave it six, just leave it six for now, um, which gives us a custom defined mean water temperature of 42. Now, you'll see in the heat, in the heat engineer software, we've got our, our, our four rooms here. Now, what we kind of initially did is that we've added a, a current radiator. So, make, let's make, yes, this is a new build, but let's make the assumption that you've got an existing radiator. This is p plus one right um and the heat loss is 504 watts we've got to make sure that that radiator if they are going to leave it in there can have that can meet that output fortunately or unfortunately sorry fortunately for you that if you're using the software it will actually tell you (laughs) in red it's not (laughs) but unfortunately it's red which means we need to do something about it so okay that's fair enough. You know, we want to leave that in their current ra- current radiators. It's the proposed emitters we need to sort of like focus our attention on here. So me and Ethan, obviously, were sort of playing around this before. Um, and we still got this kind of uh, BM2 model in there. 
at nine meters. So at nine meters here, it's not going to have that kind of required output. So what we could do yeah. is increase that, or we could say, in this case, there might already be that existing radiator. So I just kind of like add that there. So th this this paints a picture because Ethan, you you probably I don't know if you want to step in here. It's essentially, you know, if someone already has an existing radiator, uh, instead of putting another radiator in the room uh, to to also make the room more aesthetically pleasing, they can add some thermoskirt in there, and you can see how both of them complement each other, and certainly is more than enough to to meet that room heat loss. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously from my perspective, I would always say get rid of the radiator entirely and. Free your free your walls up. Um, I suppose I suppose mm. a common misconception amongst heating engineers is that because it's it's never on the well insulated properties where heat pumps start to get a bit scary. It's it's more on the, the poorly insulated properties where it then becomes a little bit of a practical issue. You know, can we get radiators in there that are big enough? Is thermoskirt going to be big enough? And I suppose a lot of heating engineers mm. out there think, well, it's either one thing or another. You know, you have to it either has to completely work with thermoscope or it has to completely work with radiators. But actually, what you can do is leave the existing radiators in and add thermoscope on as a supplementary form of heat. So in this instance, for example, the radiator is giving 357 watts, which leaves it short by about 150 watts. Well, 150 watts of thermoscope is about three meters. So one short section of skirting would be enough to bring that room up to up to temperature. Obviously, obviously, if you're going to heat this room entirely with thermoskirt, that is possible. I mean, the two wall, this is a big room bedroom. This is bedroom one we're on. It's a big room bedroom one mm. looking at it. It's 5.2 meters wide by 4.6 meters long. So if we were going to do the two external walls, that would be 9.8 meters. So if you put 9.8 meters of Deco BM2 in there and get rid of that radiator, I think that those two mm -hmm. external walls will will be enough. Sorry, nine thousand eight hundred. Okay. Yeah. Superb. Look at that. Bang on. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. That really is bang on. <laughs> yeah. Spot on. So the, the, yeah, two, the two walls is basically like, absolutely on the on the borderline. I mean, th th this customer, in actual fact, yeah. installed more than that. They installed thermoskirt on the internal walls as well. So they sort of did like a seventy five percent wrap around. So, you know, where, where we've got four, 9.8 meters in, they've probably got more like uh, 14 or 15 meters um, in right. there. So looking at the, the floor plan here, you can see this is the, this is the full house effectively in, in all its glory. So we've got um, the ground floor, which is heated by um, thermoskirt throughout. And I actually think that the utility room got scrapped in the end, because obviously this is all going to be... Um, appliances you know washing machine tumble dryer and and everything else so i think in the utility room they ended up putting like a large vertical towel radiator in there and um, but the rest of the house is yeah. used by thermoskirt the bedrooms you can see they're actually pretty big bedroom one is massive it's 5.2 meters wide and 4.6 meters long so in there the thermoskirt is supplied on four sides i'd say probably 85 90 percent of the walls are covered so if, right. if, if, for example, in this instance, we've, we've said that these two external walls would be sufficient to heat the space with thermoskirt, this room is totally mm -hmm. overkill. So that, that mean water temperature of 40 degrees could be much lower in this particular instance. And what you can yeah. see uh, on this layout is that all of the rooms have been plumbed back to a central manifold. So there's a manifold on the landing there. And then you can just see these little short runs that indicate a flow and return to the various locations. Yeah. On the first floor so yeah, th yeah this system is actually overkill but let's say that this house hadn't been really well insulated like it has been let's say that it's 1970s that heat loss is 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 probably going to be 30 40 percent higher isn't it you're probably probably more likely to see a 900 watt yeah. heat loss know, if that, if that yeah. room was a well, it, design it, it, here it's, it's, if you'd used yeah. if you'd used the software, you know they'd, we'd know that the, that these rooms are massively oversized. So the likelihood is these will be turned right down. The fact that they're running on a manifold indicates that they've got some sort of thermostat thermostatic control, um, and I expect yeah. that the the uh, auto balancing valves here will probably crank these rooms right down so they're trickling. One of the another another sort of like point to to mention 
is um so yeah you're thinking it's overkill here at this on this particular building because it's got you know building regulations in the sense of insulation but there's you know you getting back to the client and actually saying that guess what good news you can lower your flow temperatures like 35 degrees and if they have if this particular customer does have a heat pump you know even better uh, seasonal coefficient performance uh, can be achieved so it's 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 pretty good news for them i'd say <laughs> Yeah, of course. You can you can work it back the other way, can't you? You can say, we have this much thermoskirt, therefore we can run it at this flow temperature comfortably. And obviously mm -hmm. that's going to increase your your, your running cost. Um I suppose this is this is a is a prime example of a of a self build uh, situation where they've basically done their own design, kind of worked out how much they think they'd like. It's not uncommon, to be honest mm -hmm. with you, for for homeowners to go way over what the requirements are because they work on the base as well. I'd much rather be too warm than too cold and um, heating engineers yeah. like to really kind of design it exactly to the heat losses well, it's, the, it's the, the top of the, the scotch thing isn't it you you kind of want yeah you kind of want the thermoskirt to sort of like go around the perimeter you know of the of the built room anyway right you need one that kind of aesthetically uh pleasing consistency right so you know if you can like oh i may as well just yeah. do the other sort of like two two meters three meters stretch of that wall anyway right yeah exactly if you if you look at bedroom two here the, the thermoskirt the red line is the heated thermoskirt and then we have this blue line here which is actually dummy skirting so if for example you hit uh, the heat losses on say two walls you can just heat two yeah. walls and then dummy the rest of the room which is which is cheaper so basically the, the more insulated your property the less thermoskirt you'll need mm. and the less thermoskirt you need the less yeah. it'll cost and um, so then you've got the option then to say well do i want to oversize it or not the, the difference with the thermoskirt and radiators mm. is that if for example you wanted to put out double the heat required into a room you would need a radiator that's double the size so most customers go well i'm not you know, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to put a, a two meter wide radiator in when I actually only need a one meter wide radiator. Whereas with yeah. the thermoskirt, you can actually oversize the system without any aesthetic uh, impact. Ultimately, it doesn't take up any more space. It doesn't look any worse um, if you if you do twice the amount of skirting, or if you or if indeed you go to a taller profile. So, in some yeah. instances, people go into the heat pump journey thinking, "Is thermoskirt going to work on a heat pump?" In actual fact, by the time they've gone through the actual heat and design, they go, oh, we, we can actually run the, t run the heat pump much lower because it's not visually offensive to have much bigger emitters um, or even add it on to yeah. the existing emitters to, to really bring that flow temperature temperature down. Yeah, no, definitely. Do you want, do you want should we do the bedroom too? Would you want to do that, um, Ethan? So you've got like three meters on the left-hand side. And then I don't know what was the, the top section. Uh, I've got my plan. Sorry, here. yeah. Is it about, is it about four, yeah, four point seven. Four point seven. It's about is it four point seven plus three, right? Yeah. So the two external walls would be about um, the two external walls would be seven point seven meters. Seven point seven. If we did the two external yeah. walls, yeah. I, yeah. Let's do that. So if I start sharing my screen, yeah. If, um, do you want to stop sharing yours? And then I go there. I go to here. Okay, so let's 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 have a go at bedroom two then. So bedroom two, we can do this like a fresh here actually. So um, a proposed emission. So let's, let's go and add uh, the thermoskirt. Uh, the so you, again, you, apologies, you can't see my drop down list. Uh, the BM two model, and then we're going to put in seven point seven meters, aren't we? Yeah. Oh no, hang on, I've got to do it in millimeters. <laughs> So there we go in millimeters. Click save. Um, so look at that. That's not bad, is it? <laughs> it's, it's on the right on the money. Basically, for this house, the two external walls in each of the bedrooms is is enough, isn't it? Yes, for this particular bedroom too. Yeah, and that again, that's on using a maximum flow temperature of forty five and a delta T of six. So, and then that means this gives us a custom mean water temperature for the whole system of 42. So, yeah, that's that's pretty good, you know. Um, so, um, again, it's on the money. Um, I don't know Perfect. where that term comes from, by the way. Where does that come from? <laughs> America, um, America, so yeah, probably. 
<laughs> so so uh yeah I'm, as a as a heating engineer designer provider of the software i'm quite happy with that that output for that room um so it it's, certainly fits his design that um was there anything else you kind of wanted to, uh, me to sort of like carry on? Oh, I'll tell you what I could show, the, the kind of typical end result here as well. Um, so if I go back to optional pages. Yeah, let's, let's, let's have a look at the uh, end result. Let's have a look at a, a finished report. So if, if a heating installer is out there and you want to see what a, a complete finished report would be, is there some something that you can export that they can give to their customers or is there some some like sort of PDF summary, which means that they can hand it over in a yeah. easy to digest no, no, cool, definitely, definitely. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll go to click summary, summary results. So um, we got the the heat source information here. We even got even got the certificate number as well. Um, the worst performing room, which typically is always the highest watts per meter squared. There, the the running costs, etc. Saving review. Bearing in mind that this is just for four bedrooms. This is I'm going to mark as complete there. So we've marked that as complete um, and we want to we want to send the report. So there are two different types of reports. There's the full report, which is very comprehensive. It's got building materials in. Um, I'll, I'll click on it anyway so you can see it. Um, can you see it, um, Ethan, or do you need to share that screen? You need to share that, I think, mate. I need to, I need to share it. OK, so I'll quickly do that because there's two there's two reports. This is this is the, the comprehensive report. So there. For engineers out there using the software, their logo will appear here on the front page. There's a summary results as well, which is, shows the external design temperature, the heat loss of the property, um, and then the room details, as in the, the dimensions, what's above the room, what's below the room, building materials again, uh, results of the heat loss for each building parameter, the total heat loss for each room as well. If they see a red, by the way, you don't. No one needs to freak out about that because that red on the right, that red for that this particular room, it doesn't mean you need to fix it. it. Just means it's the highest value in on in the in the table. So, again, there's no there's no need to be concerned about that. Um, we've got our um, what's per meter squared deliver, um, shown here. Um, running costs, fuel costs, and then for heat pump for MCS purposes. We need to show some um, extra information for the heat pump summary as well. Um, and then if there was any photographs, the photographs would appear at the end. Um, and the final page here would be uh, the proposed emitters as well. So this is currently showing us that we've got um, these two models of thermoskirt in there for bedroom one and bedroom two. Um, and they've gone green, so it's adequately providing that solution for those. Um, we're going to make some improvements to the final full report here for the radiator page. Um, sorry, not radiator page, sorry, emitters page. So any kind of, um, you know, thermoscope being shown here, it will look, it'll, it'll look, it'll look a bit better. Um, and I'll show you what I mean, because if I stop, if I stop sharing, that, I will go to our simple reports. Um, go on to share that. So I'm going between different screens here now. That, 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 that. Whoops, there. There we go. Can you see my, um, the heat engineer dashboard now? Moving around. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm going to click on summary report. So this is what I mean by, so the that final page I showed, I showed you a minute ago on the proposed emitters, that's been improved. So it's, it's, it's a user, far more user friendly and it's easy to digest. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I just had to go between that so you could see where it was coming from. Yeah, so okay, yeah, this yeah. is the summary report. This is the summary report. So you can see it, it looks more aesthetically pleasing and engineers can change, or even the homeowner can actually change the, the font, the, uh, font, the font, I was going to say the font, the footer and the header. So you can change the theme right. on that. Um, the heat loss for the building as well. Um, and then we get onto the current emitters which is red, it's bad, we need to change that. Um, and then the proposed emitters. So we, again, you can see how this is easier to digest. Wouldn't you agree, Ethan? It looks better. Perfect. It's uh, certainly better for, better for me to look at because I'm a, as you know, I'm a dunce. Yeah. <laughs> no, you certainly aren't. No, you're not. Um, but th yeah, this this is a lot easier. Uh, there's less information on there, essentially. So we just cut back right to what is really important. So, because we used to show the outputs at all different flow temperatures and custom mean water te uh, different mean water temperatures, and it was unnecessary. 
So we've kind of improved that. So that's what we've done there. So, and then the final table is 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 the running costs there as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully that will give your give the the any any users uh, a nice sort of experience of you know using the software, understanding there's two different types of reports you can download as well, and it's quick and easy to ch edit. You know, um, uh, flow temperatures, the difference in temperatures. So that's the delta T. So flow return. Um, and uh, so you can start comparing some running costs as well if you wanted to. So it's um, highly flexible, I think. Anyway, so obviously today we we've, we've looked the um, primarily at, at heat pumps, haven't we? But for a lot of our installers, I mean, the, the thermoskirt is pretty much uh, heat source agnostic. So whether it's heat pump or gas boiler or oil or biomass, it doesn't really matter. And a lot of our of our uh, installers, a lot of our registered installers haven't actually switched over to heat pumps yet. They're still doing gas boilers and, and this software is something that they can start using immediately. So when they do start doing their um, their heat pump courses, when they do start upgrading their qualifications, they you know, they just ease straight into it because they already understand most yeah. of the principles of doing a detailed heat loss report. We can hold their hand through that as well in the sense of the software. So if they selected, like, say, a gas boiler and they've said, oh, want a flow temperature of, like, 60 degrees, we can always say, by the way, if you if you reduce it to, like, 53 degrees or something, you know, like that, an odd number, your 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 emitters, you won't need to, you know, oversight. You don't need so much emitters, for example. Or, you know, if it's a heat pump, oh, you've selected 45, you can actually get away with using 40, for example, on this thermoskirt system. So we can actually intelligently look, use a bit of artificial intelligence and give that feedback to... So this is, you know, regarding, like, users of... Uh, using conventional fossil fuels still um, we can again hold them hand hold their hand and actually prompt them to say try a lower flow temperature try a different delta t because we've kind of made these suggestions and we think it will work perfect all right wicked well rich i just want to say thanks very much for for giving you me your time and giving me a little quick demo just some of the features i know that we could probably sit on this call for hours and hours and hours and really get um, into the depths, the deep, dark depths of everything yeah. that it can do. And really today, we've only been able to sort of skim skim over the surface. But thanks very much. We will be getting this out to oh, our registered you. installer thanks. network. Thanks. Brilliant. I was going to say just quick, quickly, yeah, thanks very much for having me. Uh, it's been a pleasure as always. And it's always nice catching up and uh, showing what new innovations we're both doing as well. So, yeah, the, that collaboration partnership is always going to continue. Super. Thanks very much, mate.